Dear colleagues, good evening. First, I would like to thank the organizers for the honor of the invitation. I have no Scimitar syndrome is a rare complex type of PAPVC in which the venous return from all or most of the right lung returns to the IVC, usually below the diaphragm, and it also has many associated defects. The word uh, scimitar comes from the Persian word shamsir, which means a curved sword. The name was given to the syndrome because of the appearance on chest X-ray of the anomalous vein in many patients with this condition. The anomalous vein, which notably may course anterior or occasionally posterior to the uh, diaphragm, and this has uh, important implications regarding repair technique, uh, this vein may be stenotic at its insertion in 10 to 20% of cases. Typically, the right lung and the right pulmonary artery are hypoplastic and in more than 50% of cases, there is also abnormal arterial supply of the lung by systemic arteries arising from the infradiaphragmatic aorta. However, this is not sequestration as there is normal lung parenchyma connection to the airway. The heart is frequently dextroposed and pulmonary hypertension and a secundum atrial septal defect are very frequently present. The diagnosis may be suggested by the scimitar sign on chest X-ray, but is usually made by echocardiography and confirmed by contrast CT. Cardiac catheterization may be useful to define hemodynamics, anatomy, and to embolize the arterial collaterals. VQ scan can quantify differential fusion of the lungs and can be helpful for evaluation of postoperative lung function. Clinical presentation is bimodal. In the infantile form, patients are symptomatic with heart failure, have systemic arterial supply, overcirculation, and pulmonary hypertension. The pediatric or adult form is usually asymptomatic and is frequently detected incidentally. Regarding indications for surgery, asymptomatic older patients should be repaired if they have significant overcirculation. Symptomatic infants, on the other hand, with heart failure, pulmonary hypertension, require surgical therapy but should be medically optimized first. Embolization of arterial supply may be considered to help stabilize these patients and to possibly permit deferring surgical repair for later under better conditions. However, failure to respond should prompt surgical repair without delay, lest the pulmonary hypertension uh, establishes itself. Repair techniques include baffling, reimplantation, or mixed procedures. In all techniques, the arterial supply to the right lung, if present, is ligated. In the most popular baffling technique shown here, performed via sternotomy and under cardiopulmonary bypass, usually requiring a period of at least of deep hypothermic circulatory arrest, a baffle is constructed within the IVC and right atrium, channeling the similar flow to the left atrium via a pre-existing or created uh, ASD. Um, the disadvantages of the technique include that the long tunnel may stenose or even thrombose, and that the similar vein stenosis, if present, is not routinely addressed. To mitigate these disadvantages, we recommend the following three maneuvers which we apply routinely when using this technique. The first is to excise the entire floor of the fossa ovalis um, and to plicate the back wall of the tunnel between the similar vein orifice and the lower edge of the AST in order to shorten the tunnel as much as possible. Second, to enlarge the IVCRA junction with a pericardial patch. And third, if there is a scimitar vein orifice stenosis, the vein and right atrium are opened from the orifice cephalad side by side and anastomosed. This eliminates the stenosis and also moves the orifice more cephalad, therefore a shorter baffle to the left atrium is needed. 
In another technique, the similar vein can also be detached uh, completely from the IVC, mobilized, and anastomosed to the lateral right atrial wall. A much shorter buffer uh, is then needed to direct flow via the AST to the left atrium. Direct reimplantation to the left atrium has been popularized by John Brown. Via a right thoracotomy off pump, the vein is detached from the IVC, the pericardium opened posterior to the phrenic nerve, and the vein uh, is then anastomosed directly to the left atrium using a side biting clamp. Variations of the technique include patching the anastomosis with uh, pericardium. Other modifications of uh, direct reimplantation include the addition of a short Gore-Tex tube graft to address angulation or kinking, as proposed by von Starnes, or even the use of a Gore-Tex tube graft, uh, which extends through the right atrium to uh, the left atrium. In the uh, subsequent talk, Dr. Lugones from Argentina will describe his uh, innovative technique of using inside of pericardium to baffle the similar vein to the left atrium, but he will describe this in great detail. Allow me now to present two illustrative challenging cases from our own experience. The first is that of a severely symptomatic neonate with major similar, uh, similar vein stenosis, um, which uh, was intubated at birth. A coronary stent was then placed at another institution as palliation to relieve the stenosis and achieved some improvement clinically, but soon stent restenosis developed and there was recurrent heart failure and pulmonary hypertension. The baby was then transferred to our unit for surgical repair. At operation uh, via sternotomy, the systemic arterial supply was divided. The terminal similar vein with the embedded stent had to be excised along with part of the wall of the IVC under a brief period of arrest. The IVC was then patched, the pericardium opened posterior to the phrenic, and the vein anastomosed to the left atrium, first having been spatulated and augmenting it anteriorly with autologous pericardium. At three years follow-up, the child is uh, asymptomatic with unobstructed uh, uh, similar vein um, drainage to the left atrium. The second case was again of a severely symptomatic neonate intubated and mechanically ventilated at birth with scimitar vein draining to the IVC. The hypoplastic right lung was hyperlucent and emphysematous as you see on the chest CT image. The RPA was hypoplastic and there was systemic level pulmonary hypertension, yet there was no systemic arterial supply to the lung. There was a large secundum ASD and major overcirculation with QPQS of more than 3.5 to 1. At operation via right thoracotomy, it proved impossible uh, to retract the lung and mobilize the similar vein for direct reimplantation as it was not tolerated hemodynamically. We elected to only close the AST, which we achieved via sternotomy and the hemodynamic result was good with pulmonary artery pressure down to 30 millimeters of mercury and the QPQS 1.3. The patient uh, was making a slow but steady post-operative progress towards extubation, but two weeks later, acute massive emphysematous degeneration of the lung occurred, displacing uh, the heart uh, to the left and causing severe tamponade. At the emergency salvagery operation, a transmediastinal pneumonectomy <clears throat> was performed. The patient recovered well, and she is now asymptomatic 10 years uh, later. Regarding results, the literature includes several isolated case reports and, and small series as shown here. Operative mortality is generally low regardless of technique, but the incidence of stenosis or even uh, occlusion of the uh, similar drainage is uh, significant. One of the largest uh, studies uh, on this uh, subject is the European Congenital Heart Surgeons Association multi-institutional retrospective 10-year review uh, series with 68 patients. 
buffalo repair was done in 56%, reimplantation in 31%, and uh, in 12%, pneumonectomies uh, had to be performed. Overall operative mortality was uh, 5.9%, and there was about 15% uh, incidence of stenosis in similar venous uh, drainage observed uh, over the uh, subsequent uh, follow-up period without sig significant difference between different techniques. One third of these patients were asymptomatic, while the remainder required surgical revision or, in some cases, balloon dilatation. In conclusion, Simeter syndrome, far from simple uh, PA PVC, can be challenging, especially in its infantile form. Repair techniques include intracardiac baffling, variants of reimplantation, or of extracardiac tunneling to the left atrium. Being aware of the different techniques is very useful in order to be able to handle unusual anatomic situations. Operative mortality is low, mostly involving the infantile form. Similar drainage pathway stenosis or even thrombosis can be encountered uh, in about 15% of cases during follow-up and can be a cause of significant morbidity, most often necessitating re-intervention. And finally, pneumonectomy uh, along with repair of uh, any associated lesions, may be necessary as primary approach for severe cases of pulmonary hypoplasia or dysplasia, and of course, uh, after a failed uh, repair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Many greetings from Athens, Greece.